Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so question four. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is constantly being repainted. It is estimated that the surface area of exposed steel that needs to be painted is approximately whew, 10 million square feet. Given that one meter is equal to 3.28 feet, convert the surface area of the bridge into square meters. Given your answer in the form A by 10 to the N, where one is less than or equal to A is less than 10, and N is an element of N. So this is scientific notation. And they tend to ask it as part of another question, not really a question on its own. OK, so they're doing this here in, in kind of an area question. OK, so something you need to be really careful of when you're doing conversions is when they start talking about square. OK, so square feet. Um, and let me explain why. Let me try and explain why. So I hope this works. So I'm drawing a square. OK, and I want to make it um, 10 metres by 10 metres. OK, so you know now the area of that is 10 tens, 100 metres squared. OK. OK, let me convert 10 metres to feet. So each metre is 3.2 feet, OK? So 10 metres, so I go 10 multiply by 3.28. So I'm getting 32.8 feet. OK, so 32.8 feet, 32.8 feet. And I want to get the area of that. 32.8 by 32.8, 1075.84 feet squared. Okay, so I haven't done anything too special there. However, okay, let's pretend that I hadn't done this. OK, and if I say to you, convert 100 metres squared now to me to feet, would you just go 100 metres squared multiplied by 3.28? Wouldn't that make sense? Because you're going metres to feet. OK, not a thousand, but a hundred. OK, and lo and behold, when you multiply that, you get 328 feet squared. So how, when I converted that to, to meters, did I not get 1075.84? Okay, and the reason is because it's feet by feet, it's squared, your conversion when you're dealing with squared has all also to be squared. So you must use 3.28 squared to change meters squared to feet squared. OK, and it can be difficult enough to remember to do that. So when I put that into my calculator, I do indeed get 1075.84 feet squared. OK, so watch out for the old conversion on it. Uh, and that's why they're trying to show you here in the diagram that it's more than just a 3.28. It's a 3.28 squared because area is length by width. OK, so I hope that makes sense. That's why I tend to be very cautious when I'm dealing with um, squares. OK, so square feet or square meters or square anything. OK, so given that one metre is equal to 3.28 feet, convert the surface area of the bridge to square metres. OK, so 10 
million is equal to 10 and one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is a uh, 10 million. Okay, and I have to change him to, so that's feet. I have to change him to, where am I? Square meters. Okay, so now I'm going from feet to meters. So I divide by 3.28 squared. Okay, so 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in my calculator divided by 3.28 squared. And I get 929506.2463 meters squared. Okay, so that's a perfectly acceptable answer. I have converted 10 million square feet to meters squared. OK, and, and if you're never sure whether you divide or multiply, think which is bigger. So when you look here, you see there's more feet than meters. So there should be more feet than meters. OK, so it's always a multiply or divide. See which one, um, see which one makes it smaller in this case. OK, so that is your answer. It's just not in scientific notation. So scientific notation is just a way of writing big numbers. So I get very nervous putting numbers like that into a calculator because I'm afraid I'll forget some of the zeros. So it's actually much easier to put in what's called scientific notation. So, so this number that I'm here, okay, I could write it as 92950.6245. Multiply by 10. Okay, so in other words, I've moved the decimal place back one place, but multiplying it by 10 will move it there. That's what um, multiplying by 10 does. Okay, it moves the decimal point along. Or of course, I could write it as 9295.062463, but this time I'd have to multiply by 100. So two zeros. So the decimal place moves twice, okay? Or 100 could be written as 10 squared. Or of course, I could write it as 929.5062463 multiplied by 10 cubed, okay? So that, that number tells you how many zeros. So that's a thousand. So one, two, three. So you can see now. So these are all the different ways of writing the number. And they're all the same number. OK, it's just different ways of writing it. So when they tell you to write it in the form A by 10 to the N, this is what they mean. So that is in effect my A multiplied by 10 to the N. OK, now they've put a restriction on the A because they don't want to get back like 10 different answers. A has to be between 1 and 10. So I ask you, where do you put your decimal point in that series of digits so that your A ends up being between one and 10? And there's only one spot you can put it, which is here, so that you have 9.2. So 9.29506.2463. Okay, so the decimal point has gone in here, okay? And how many places did I move it? Okay, so I'm gonna work from this one. So I moved it one, two, three, four, five. So it's that multiplied by 10 to the five. Okay, so they are the same numbers. This one here is the scientific notation of this answer here. Now, the last thing they examine in this question is rounding, and it's often significant figures. So what is the difference between significant figures and decimal places? OK, so if I was to do this in decimal places, are you OK that it'd be nine point? Well, the five is going to round up the nine. So in fact, it would be nine point three zero. OK, that would be two decimal places. Now, that's not the same as two significant figures. So what is a significant figure? Well, when you're talking about significant figures, okay, you're also talking about digits before the decimal point. So in a whole units, 
Okay, so the nine here is the most significant figure. It's the most important number in your in your answer. Um, think money, that nine would be far more important than any other digit. So that counts as your first significant figure. Okay, and then that's your second significant figure. Okay, and of course, we have to look at the third one to decide if he stays at two or goes up to three. And because that's a nine, it's going to make the other one go to a three by 10 to the five square meters is your answer. OK, so quite a lot in that question. You have a conversion factor squared, you have scientific notation and you have rounding to significant figures. So let me know if any of those parts of questions needs more practice and we can, of course, pull out more questions and, and practice them. OK, so that's part A. Part B then. A litre of the paint used on the Golden Gate Bridge will cover approximately five square metres. The paint comes in 25 litre tins. Find the minimum numbers of tins of paint that will be needed to paint the entire bridge. So a litre of paint covers five square meters. So I think the first thing I'll do is figure out how many liters of paint I need. So one liter, that took me a minute to look at that to figure out which way is the right way to go. So let me go back to my, my number. I have 9.3 by 10 to the five meters squared. And let's divide him by five. So 9.3 by 10 to the five over five and I get one eight six zero 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 liters of paint required. Okay, so it comes in 25 liter tins. So if I divide this by 25 then, for I need seven four four zero tins of paint. A lot of paint to paint the entire bridge. Okay, so that was kind of the area and volume and a bit of matsy ones in it. Okay, part B then, completely different question, and it was indices. Okay, so solve the equation. 2 to the power of 9x minus 1 equals 8 to the power of 2x, okay? And I know from talking to you, indices isn't your favorite chapter. Okay, so the theory behind this is as follows. Okay, if I have a base number, and I'm going to use the base number three, and if I have three to the power of something, and I have equals three to the power of something, okay, when are those two numbers equal? Okay, well, the only time those two numbers can be equal is if their powers are also equal. Okay, so let me say that again. If the base number, this is called the base number of, a, of an indices and the top thing is called the power. Okay, so if the base numbers are equal, which they are, they're three, then the only way the left hand side of that equation equals the right is if their powers match. Okay, so in that case, you can drop the base numbers because you know they already equal and you can let their powers equal each other. So that is the theory I'm going to use to solve this equation here. I'm gonna try and make the base numbers the same so that I can drop the base numbers and let the powers equal each other. Okay, so let's have a look at the base numbers. This is a base number of two, this has a base number of eight. So I need to make them match. Either he needs to be eight or he needs to be two or the two of them need to be something else, okay? So the easiest thing to do with, with uh, base numbers is to make them as small as possible, okay? So two is as small as it could go. So my question to you is that number eight, can I write that as two to the power of something? 
Okay, so pop on your calculator and go two by two and you'll get four. Okay, go by two again and you'll get eight. So two to the power of three, okay? That's what powers are. It's repetition. How many twos do I need to give me eight? So I can write eight as two to the power of three, okay? So let's do that in our equation here. So he's staying two to the power of nine X minus one, but I'm going to change eight as two to the power of three. So I'm just putting that in a bracket because it's literally only the eight that's two to the power of three. And can you see there's also a two X sitting outside that eight. So that has to stay there, that two X, okay? Now, let me go to the rules of indices. Let me find them in the log table. So page 21, okay? And these are your rules of indices and you use them to simplify indices. So let me grab them. Okay, so you're literally looking to see which rule does that look like, okay? So I normally call them rule one, rule two, rule three, rule four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, okay? So it's not a division, so it's not rule two, okay? Rule one, no, it's rule three. It's what I call a power to a power. Okay, so it's a power raised to another power. Okay, so it's this one. So what is it telling you to do to the indices? It's telling you to multiply them. Okay, so that is different to rule one because rule one would have been two to the power of three, okay? But there would have been another base number. Do you see the A appears again? So it would have been the same base number to the power of two X. OK, so it would have looked like that to use rule one. And in that case, we would have added the powers. OK, so it's not that one. It's instead rule three. So it's a power to a power. Do you see the base number A didn't appear again. And I multiply the powers together. OK, so this is equal to two times three multiply by two X. So three twos six x and this is two to the power of nine x minus one i didn't do anything with that one okay so now let's have a look at it i have a base number two to a power equal to the same base number to a power so that is super because it allows me now to drop the base numbers and let the powers equal each other like that okay why because the only way that this, the left-hand side, could equal the right, the base numbers match, so therefore the powers also have to match. They also have to equal. And just like anyone, any other algebra, I'm going to bring x's to the left and I'm going to bring um, numbers to the right. So he's going to become 9x minus 6x on the left of the equals to sign. And the minus one is going to become over and it's going to be plus one. So 9x minus 6x is 3x equal to one. Divide by the number in front of x. And I'm getting x is equal to a third. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three-year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies, and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.